Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Good morning. I didn't rush out super early this morning. There really was no sunrise. Uh, it's uh, very, very cloudy. And I saw the forecast the other day and I was like, this would be a good opportunity to do some woodland photography in this area that I have, I've been to many times in the fall. I've been to many times in the winter, but I've never seen this location in the spring with those kind of, you know, overly saturated and punchy spring greens. The spring greens that almost look unrealistic sometimes. I've got about an hour's drive left before I get to this location, but with the, um, the power, or I should say with the magic of video editing, we will uh, we'll be there in just a minute. This is exactly the spring greens that I, I was hoping for. Just extremely vibrant, extremely punchy, and they're just so thick and so full, this entire woodland area. It's, uh, it's absolutely, it's actually better than I expected. Now, of course, the fog did dissipate as always. It seems like on the East Coast, if you want a little bit of fog, you're gonna have to get up really, really early, and it is not gonna last long. But nevertheless, even without the fog, this area looks fantastic. Like I said, better than I expected. And I came out here to this area for a very specific, uh, I guess, little project. And it's uh, not the, the normal thing that I do. I tried this out, I don't know, maybe last year, um, intentional camera movement. I remember for years, I thought it was just a, the most ridiculous thing in the world, seeing people out there just swinging their cameras all over the place, trying to get purposely blurry photos. That's what I thought in my mind. I was like, this is so ridiculous. People spend a fortune on all these great cameras and lenses for, for sharp and in focus photographs then you got people out there that are just uh, trying to create as blurry of an image as possible and I just remember thinking it was just so ridiculous it was completely bananas but over you know as my own photography progresses and as I get a little bit wiser I started to realize you know what that's actually pretty cool it's there's definitely a a, a serious technique to that and I tried it out last year in Acadia National Park and I, I've shared that photo before and I absolutely love the way that turned out. And I said, you know what, Mark, I wanna, I wanna try that again. I've only done it one time and I learned a lot from doing it that one time. So that is what I am here to do today. Got a very light bag, just brought a telephoto lens and a mid-range lens, only one tripod and that's just a, that you're sitting on right now just to film this video. So everything will be handheld and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Should be a fun video, kind of re pretty relaxing, just going around and swinging my camera all over the place and to see what I can come up with with these incredibly vibrant greens. So this is the technique that I did in Acadia where I basically put the camera on a two second timer and then start from the top and then count off to two and then swipe down excuse me, with a course of slower shutter speed. Right now I'm at about a half a second, which I think might be a little bit too long, but I don't want to include a lot of the sky. That's why I start at the top, which is kind of the tree line, and then swipe down. So I'm gonna start up here, two seconds, one, two, and down. Yeah. Two seconds, one, two, and down. Yeah, I think that's gonna be a little bit too bright, but uh, oh wow, actually it does look kind of cool though. Not bad for the first attempt. And that's kind of why I didn't really want any of the sky because when you get those little highlight, little pockets of highlights in the sky, you kind of get these just really white, bright streaks across the image and it just doesn't look quite as good. I'll tell you what, this is some addicting stuff. I've gotten, I think I've already gotten, maybe gotten I think I've already made three or four photographs that uh, I'm pretty excited about already. And these conditions are really, really good for this because there's two very dominant colors. You have like the oranges and the browns of the, the leaves on the ground. And then you have these insanely vibrant spring greens in the background or up in the sky or in the, or in the upper portion of the screen, <laughs> of the screen, man. And uh, you just, that's this great color contrast. And plus the sky is not very bright because it's very overcast. So these conditions are absolutely perfect for this so far. I wanna try a couple different things because I did a little bit of research and there's a lot of different ways to do this from twisting your camera in different directions from the left and the right. It's not just about swiping up and down. I'm gonna do some swiping left and right. And I also wanna do something called like a zoom 
I don't know if it's got a name. I'm sure it does have a name. I just don't know what it is. But where you take the exposure and as the, uh, the camera is exposing, you zoom in or you zoom out and it's supposed to create another type of effect. But it's all kind of the, the same thing, like intentional camera movement. So I found this composition over here. I'll show you that I'm, I really like. This works the best for, for me so far. You have this tree on the left dominant tree in the center, dominant tree on the right, three dominant trees, and they're large enough in the frame so it creates visual interest so everything doesn't just look like smush or, or everything doesn't look like mush. You have visual interest in the overall frame. Granted, it's all completely out of focus and smeared, but those three trees create that, uh, that focus point or a focus attention in the overall photograph because for me, it's all about the, the trees and the colors and the shapes of these trees. It's not really the, the trees themselves. It's really just the shapes that are created by those trees. So I found this tree behind me. It's got some nice flowers on it. Per usual I have no idea what kind of tree it is it's not a dogwood tree but uh, if you know leave it in the comment section below I'm curious but it's got these nice flowers and it seems like it'd be a good subject to kind of do the the whipping kind of rotating to the left or to the right type of a technique I've never tried this before so I could be completely off base but let's give it a shot and see what we can come up with yeah, here we go two one oh <laughs> that's crazy Check out the very first attempt. Let me pull it up here. That's wild. Is that focused? I'll put it on the screen too. If you, I don't know how well you can see that, but that's really cool. I'm gonna try it with speeding up the shutter speed just a little bit because that motion seems to be a little bit more erratic than the, the swiping. But I'll tell you what, I hate to admit it, but my arms are getting kind of tired. I probably need to get back to the gym a little bit, but yeah, my shoulder, I'll probably be sore in the morning for this. How pathetic is that? So this kind of grouping right here, there seems to be a good, a good amount of these white flowers in this area right through here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and say two, one, and turn. <laughs> Probably made you sick, but uh, let's see. One, two. Yeah, if you suffer from motion sickness, you might not want to watch this clip right here. I started thinking about uh, something, I don't know, a few months ago about like what my ultimate goal in photography was. And uh, it's an interesting question, you know, outside of the obvious, get better at photography. Excluding that, what is my ultimate goal with photography? And the answer that I came up with was to be able to create a beautiful image, beautiful artwork, no matter what the location is and no matter what the condition is. So I'm trying to get to a point, and I guess that's what my ultimate goal would be, would be to go to any location. It doesn't matter where, how boring or how awesome it is. And no matter what the conditions are, still be able to create something beautiful there. And that's why I'm kind of always trying to do these little, these little projects because it just helps me to become more comfortable. And I think the more things you can try, the more outside of your box you can get, that's ultimately just gonna be one more sk photographic skill that you have. All right, round two, rest it up. So now I'm gonna try and do the swipe to the left and right. And in theory, this should be a little bit easier because I don't have to worry about st starting or stopping at a certain point because there is gonna be no sky. I just basically just kind of rotate to the left and to the right. And really all I have to figure out is just a particular shutter speed that uh, is gonna look the best. But I found this area here where there's a lot of uh, kind of, not highlights, but there's a little bit of light hitting the canopy of trees in the background. And since the majority of this is gonna be green, at least that's what I'm envisioning, I thought that kind of uh, illuminated green in the background might look the best. We'll see. Two, one, and move. Yeah, see, okay. First attempt, I don't know if you can see that. It looks like a bunch of mush, but it kind of looks okay because there's a little bit of texture in there. Let's try another one here. What's easier about this, and this is what I was envisioning too, is that you don't really have to time the, the two, second two second timer as much. You can really just start just kind of moving across the scene and just let the shutter go off wherever it goes off. Yeah, it's a little bit easier. It takes a little bit of the timing out of it. I'm gonna try and pick up some of the, uh, the burnt oranges in the bottom. Okay, so that was a little bit more challenging. It seemed like the only thing I could get to come out that looked okay, at least on the back of the camera, I'll definitely show these uh, photos in the video, you probably have already seen them, but 
it only looks good to me when I was just moving really fast and you really couldn't see anything. It was really just streaking colors, which looked okay. But when I went a little bit slower to try and pick up the shapes of the trees, it just didn't look, look well, look good. So um, that was an interesting attempt or interesting technique. That was probably my, my least favorite of the three so far. It might just because it's just woodland or it could just be user error, one or the other. And for my final trick of the day, I feel like this, like a magician, like I'm putting on some kind of a, a magic show. But the last thing I wanted to try is this kind of zoom effect. So basically, uh, it, this actually might be easier to do on a tripod. I'm not 100% certain. I'll try both. But basically, you just focus on, on something. And then when your camera is taking your exposure, you either zoom in or you zoom out. And it's supposed to create this kind of just like zoom effect. And I don't really know what you call it. But I think these flowers are going to be a good, uh, a good subject to test that out on as well. All right, so as you can see, I've got the camera on the tripod. And I'm going to focus on one of these flowers in the center. We we'll zoom all the way in to 200 millimeters, start the timer, and then just zoom all the way out. Okay, after a little bit of practice, I got that, which is, oh, it's pretty interesting actually. That, uh, yeah, this may be my third or fourth attempt, but I think that came out pretty good. All right, let's try it without a tripod. The hardest part with doing this handheld is it's a long lens and it's hard to <laughs> it's hard to keep the camera somewhat steady one-handed and use the other hand to do the, the zoom. Actually that one came out okay. Two, one, rotate. I think I did that one too soon. Try one more here. And I completely, <laughs> I completely forgot to even, even uh, zoom the camera. I froze up. I just kind of sat there, let it take a, a normal exposure. Aha! Got it. Figured it out. I put it back on a tripod, and I think I was just using too fast of a shutter speed, so I really, really slowed it down, and I was able to get this. Hopefully that you can see that. But that looks pretty cool right there. So I think the big issue was just using too fast of a shutter speed, but it, it is very difficult to do. Maybe I'm just not strong enough, but it's difficult to, to have a, a longer lens doing it without a tripod and you have to hold a camera with one hand, use the other hand to zoom. That gets a little bit shaky. Plus a uh, very slow shutter speed kind of is a little bit of a mess. At least I struggled with it, but this seems to be a pretty good technique. This is the very first shot that I took on the tripod with a much slower shutter speed. And, and this looks pretty good here. Oh, and before I forget, I do wanna say just a real big thanks to the sponsor of this week's video, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends in page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog posts and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I'm gonna, I'm looking around for some more compositions, but I don't want to completely bore you with all of my childlike antics. I've just been kind of running around out here just flipping my camera on all different plate, all different orientations and it's just been a lot of fun. It's just something completely different. I have definitely created some photographs and I'm pretty excited about it. Can't wait to get home and start editing these images. But it was just good just to kind of get out of the proverbial box and do something a little bit different than the, you know, the normal landscape photography. So I'd highly encourage you. It doesn't have to be intentional camera movement, but I used to think it was completely ridiculous. I used to think, you know, why would I do that? I would never use any of those images in my portfolio or put them on my website. Oh, there's only 10 seconds before this memory card dies. I really do appreciate you watching this week's video. And uh, if you enjoyed it, if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And 